Namaste. This is Yoga Therapy Podcast and I'm your host, Shira Cohen, yoga teacher, yoga therapist and Ayurvedic wellness educator. In these conversations with experts in the field of yoga therapy, you'll find out what it is and how it can help you and your loved ones to reclaim well-being. We'll touch on physical as well as mental health, physiology, emotions, women's health, spiritual well-being, goddesses, and self-development in the fullest sense. Listening to another story can change ours, so thank you for showing up, and let's begin this journey together. Good morning, everyone. So it's morning for me, so I'm saying good morning. It's a Monday morning, and it's very windy outside. And today I'm doing a solo, and it's about women's hormones because, hang on, I'm just going to check what is the sound like. Okay, I'm not too loud then. Right. So... Yeah, I wanted to talk about perimenopause today and menopause. I'm kind of reaching the end of my perimenopause. And perimenopause was a shock. I didn't know I was in it. I've been in it for about three and a half, four years now. I didn't know that was it. So I was also in my um, burnout at the same time. So I was very chaotic. Perimenopause is called the change. It's also called the time of uncertainty. There's a lot of confusion, um, many changes, not just physiological ones, but also psychological and spiritual ones. We start to have these deep questions. If we're in a long-term relationship, um, we start to wonder if we still want to stay in that relationship because often we've just gone through our life just doing the things automatically and at one point you all of a sudden wake up and go is this the way I want to continue and if you have a good relationship with that person you can grow together and talk about the changes that are happening and feel more comfortable with yourself and the other in those changes but if there isn't that good communication and acceptance it's pretty hard to do that change together all right, so men also have this change, the midlife crisis, they call it. It's There's also changes of hormones happening for them. I haven't researched that because it hasn't affected me, but I have been researching this for quite a while. And, yeah, I really wanted to share just one thing that made me get back into this was um, I didn't have my periods for the last 40 days. And I was like, no, you know, I was always waiting for it to end. And then the last year or so, I was contemplating, like, my period's actually the time just before that I wake up to all the things that annoyed me that whole month. And you're called to look at those things. So I don't want to lose that friend that points out the truth every month. So I'm not ready to lose her yet. And when she when she didn't come, when I didn't get my periods, I was pretty down. And so I jumped into my wonderful book from Christiane Northrup, The Wisdom of Menopause. And I read somewhere that soya, that the symptoms I was having and that a lot of women go into menopause early because they have too little estrogen and that you can increase your estrogen by drinking soya or eating soya products. So I went and got myself some soya. I drank two cups of soya and the next day I had my periods again. So I was very relieved. I don't want it to be finished just yet because I'm only 46, nearly 47. And um, I'm not ready yet to give up that friend of truth. So, yeah, though it can be a very paralyzing time I'm kind of over the para paralysis from perimenopause so in the beginning it's quite shocking because everything becomes um, uncertain there's no regularity the periods can either come twice as often or last twice as long or stop for a while and that kind of deregulates us because even though this cycle is annoying at least it's a cycle and it's something we can count on um, but when that falls away and, and there is no certainty, especially in this time of very much uncertainty outside ourselves, it can be overwhelming. So I just want to read something from Christiane's 
book, which I think is very important. Um, I'll talk about the symptoms. Well, let, let me do that now. The physical symptoms, emotional, mental, psychological symptoms. And then I'll read this little passage from her book. Um, so the symptoms uh, which made it very clear to me was the weight gain, especially around the middle, and it being really hard to lose. I wasn't eating extra food. I was still doing organic. I was still doing just as much exercise but I wasn't losing the weight. So what helped me was um, switch to a very low carbohydrate diet. So I went keto for a while and I switched to that now and then really increase um, anything that is anti-inflammatory like um, flax seeds and much more green uh, leafy vegetables. Uh, what else? The symptoms, physical symptoms are night sweats, hot flushes, less energy, really terrible sleep. Uh, it's hard falling asleep. It's hard staying asleep, irregular bleeds. And these are all wonderful <laughs> symptoms, as you can hear, and that's only the physical. So, but for me, the keto diet really helped to even that out. And then I started getting hot flushes again the last few, the last month or so, just before this long extended no periods. So when I looked it up in the books and, and the research, it's that my estrogen is starting to drop as well. So my progesterone had already dropped and you can notice your progesterone dropping. So I will go into the symptoms of these separately afterwards. But um, the emotional symptoms of perimenopause are anger, frustration, regret, dismay, grief, disappointment, feelings of loss. It's really a time of letting go, so letting go of all certainty, but also letting go of past. So mentally we feel unclear, brain foggy, loss of memory and concentration. Sometimes we forget things or we just blank out. That happened a lot in the beginning. Now um, I'm using ginkgo for that. And for the emotional symptoms, I started doing a lot more dancing, journaling, um, going into uh, family of origin stuff. So this is really a time of self-care, perimenopause. It asks us to turn everything around. What have we learned in the first 50 years? And what do we want to take with us into the next 50 years and what do we want to leave behind so it's really a big question of that psychologically we revisit all our past wounds especially mother wounds and the wisdom of being a woman we look at the traumas family of origin purpose of our life so this is a time of reflection and renewal we take a better look at all things and we put it back into perspective so what have we outgrown? What did we identify with back then and that we've just trod on this path for maybe 10 years, 20 years, and all of a sudden we wake up and we go, we don't want to walk that path anymore. Um, so we need to identify our new self, new needs, and start to reclaim our power as individuals by following our inner guidance. So that becomes much louder, that inner voice. And Women who are perimenopausal can be very erratic, but it's also us starting to reclaim our voice and our choices and our way. And that can be pretty shocking to other people because we've always been there for everyone else and now it's choosing for ourselves, which, yeah, might not be nice for the others, but that's how it is. <laughs> we've spent 50 years looking after others. <laughs> okay, so hot flushes, night sweats. These can all be helped by cooling practices such as shitali, um, shitkari. So these are the breathing exercises. Um, if you curl your tongue and if that's not an option, you can just place your teeth together and you breathe through the mouth. And that mouth breathing, breathing in through the mouth, cools the breath down, which cools down the physiology. So that's like a quick first aid practice that you can do. I'll just do one now so you can hear it. So I'm curling my tongue and breathing through that. 
and you can do that for five to 15 rounds until you feel more cool. It'll also, if we have this hot flushes, like I have a lot of these, I don't have night sweats, but I do flush very hot middle of the night for hours on end. And if I throw off the blankets, then I'm freezing cold again. So it's very annoying and I just can't sleep through it. And then I can do these practices, so that helps cool me down. But was what was even more amazing was just drinking those two cups of soya. I was cool the whole night. I slept through the whole night. So I'm definitely going to be repeating that for, for the next couple of years. Okay, so I'm going to read this passage from um, Christiane Northrup's book, The Wisdom of Menopause. So a woman's body begins life fully equipped to produce all the hormones she needs throughout life. All of the so-called sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and the androgens such as testosterone. They are manufactured from the same ubiquitous precursor molecule, cholesterol. So that just goes to show how important our fats are. Cholesterol is healthy, not unhealthy. Sugar is what makes us ill not cholesterol. Okay, in addition, our bodies also have the ability to convert one type of sex hormone into another. For example, estrogen can be converted into testosterone and progesterone can be converted into estrogen. Whether or not these conversions actually take place depends upon our body's minute-to-minute -minute needs, our emotional states, and our nutritional state. What all of this means is that not all women will need or want hormone replacement. In many cultures, hormone supplements are infrequently prescribed, yet women in those cultures rarely have uncomfortable perimenopausal symptoms. How can this be? Okay, so how can it be that in other cultures they don't have the symptoms that most Western women do have? So first of all, the ovaries only slow down they don't shut down so this is uh, one myth i think we need to bust um, our ovaries continue working they just don't make eggs anymore we're not there to be fertile anymore moreover a woman's body is designed to produce estrogen progesterone and testosterone at other sites besides the ovaries and it is ready and willing to increase or mediate the output from those auxiliary sites when the need arises at midlife, research has shown, for example, that estrogen, progesterone, and androgen are produced in body fat, skin, brain, the adrenal glands, and even peripheral nerves. But whether or not adequate production occurs depends on what else is going on in our lives. So it's really important to look at every other factor like yoga therapy does. We look at the factors of mind, body, diet, relationships, spiritual um, integrity. If we don't meet these or we avoid certain situations and um, issues, they will keep coming back and this will put demands on our endocrine system. So reproductive system is part of the endocrine system. So now I'm going to just go through the deficiencies and symptoms of deficiencies of estrogen. So um, I think a lot of us have heard the fact that when we go into perimenopause or menopause, when we're in the menopausal state, we don't produce the right hormones or the same level or that we've heard that the ovaries actually shut down and therefore we get osteoporosis and blah, blah, blah. But um, you also have to think about the lifestyle. Do you start to exercise less because you are feeling tired, more tired often? So that's another thing I did in the last few years. It's just increased my exercise. I do cardio every morning, just five to 10 minutes, but that's enough to get the heartbeat up, to regulate your hormones. Like we spoke with um, Vidya Lakshmi last week, um, doing a strong Surya Namaskar in the morning increases the serotonin, which makes us happy, and that can balance all the other hormones. So it's really important to think about working with your hormones. It's so important. Again, I stress the point that most drugs that we take affect the hormones pretty much all so um unless we're trying to get rid of some infestation 
then we're just working with hormones. So how important is it to just rebalance our body's hormonal structures and production and make sure it has everything it needs so that we can do it ourselves. We don't need those drugs. In the beginning, if we're way out of balance, yes, we do, but we want to create um, a space for the body or a, a stadium that we can actually do that ourselves because we can. It's use it or lose it physiologically, physically, mentally, on every level. Use it or lose it. So really important. Okay, symptoms of estrogen deficiency, hot flushes, night sweats, vaginal dryness, mood swings, irritability and depression mostly, mental fuzziness or brain fog, migraines, headaches, vaginal or bladder infections, incontinence, urinary tract infections, vaginal wall thinning happens, uh, decreased sexual response, the symptoms of estrogen excess. I will write these down in the show notes. Okay, but excess of estrogen, bilateral pounding headaches, so the headache is on both sides, recurrent vaginal yeast infections, breast swelling and tenderness, depression, nausea, vomiting, bloating, um, leg cramps, yellow tinged thin, uh, skin, and excessive vaginal bleeding. So that's when we have excess estrogen. Now, symptoms of progesterone deficiency. So the symptoms are a lot less for progesterone. Uh, premenstrual migraines, a headache before we have um, menstruation. PMS symptoms, irregular or excessive heavy periods. Anxiety and nervousness. So that's when we have deficient progesterone. Excess progesterone, we feel sleepy, drowsy, and depressed. So what progesterone does, it actually helps us slow down. It, it regulates our mental um, activity. So it's a good thing to have when it's at its nice optimal level. When it's too much, it makes us drowsy and sleepy and, and even depressed if, there, if it goes on too long, obviously. So it's really important to get these into a nice um, steady level. So here I've written down some things that we can do for depression, sun salutations, irregular bleeds. We can do restorative yoga, so yoga where we are lying down for longer periods with um, props that allow us to really settle into the pose without there being any stretching or activity. Um, and then for depression or anxiety, you can use that morning sun salutations and in the evening you do moon salutations, which is a different, slower version. Um, if we have anger, confusion, all the mental stuff going on, meditation, yoga nidra, um, nadi shodhana, which is alternate nostril breathing. So we close one nostril, breathe in through the Let's say we start with the left, breathe in through the left, then you close the left nostril, you breathe out through the right. Then you breathe in through the right, close the right, breathe out through the left, and breathe in through the left, and that's one round. And so you do that for 10 rounds. Um, you can count for a count of four in, four out, four in, four out. Or you can increase that up to 10 in, 10 out on either side. The most important part is that you do it equally on both sides and that it's comfortable. Um, I have these up on my YouTube channel. I will put that in the show notes as well. So if, what we can do for estrogen um, lack deficiency is increase soya products. Um, progesterone deficiency, we do Vitex Agnes castus, which is, um, what's it called? Cherry or something, cherry. But um, that helps the Latin name. I'll write that down as well. I haven't got the page where I found that. So I will write that down, what that is in English. 
Um, but you can find these easily in any kind of reform shop. Okay, so I hope I've answered a lot of questions there and uncertainty. Um, journaling has helped me loads. So you can write to the emotions, to the fears, to the uncertainties and get to know them better. You can ask questions such as, uh, let me see, where is that book? Go. So, dear, whatever it is that you're writing to, say it is, um, dear anger, when I look at you, I see. When I am angry at you, I am angry at you because you ruin my life because I hate you because I feel bad about you because I feel sorry due to you because I feel excited by you because I love me with you because I am happy with you because. So you'd start to reframe it over those um, different questions and you start to have a different relationship with that emotion or that trigger because there's something else underneath all that and the more we get to know whatever is bugging us or difficult or overwhelming, the less it becomes overwhelming. One of the biggest things of overwhelm is ignorance, not knowing what it is and why it's triggering us. So that's why journaling is so powerful and sitting with our emotions in mindful meditation or insight meditations because finally we start to allow the subconscious to rise to the conscious and uh, we start to clear that field and move into the unconscious, hopefully, starts to move into the subconscious that way because there's more space. And then we get to the nitty-gritty of our core and ourself and find who we are and let go of all we are not anymore. So this is the power of perimenopause and uncertainty. It's the big change. It's crossing the great waters. I see it like that. Um, so Uma, Uma Dinsmore Tuli, she's written an amazing book called Yoni Shakti, and she actually goes through all the women's phases with the goddesses. And she has amazing practices in there. And she also describes how these, um, these transitions don't have to be disempowering. They can be wonderful processes. So she calls perimenopause, she associates it with uh, Bhagala Mukti, Mukti. And she's the goddess that paralyzes us. She shocks us and she stares at us and she makes sure we don't miss what this lesson is about. Um, yeah, and she's one of the Mahadashas, Mahavijas, sorry, the Dasha Mahavijas, which is the 10 wisdom goddesses. So that's another great um, resource to go deeper into women's and womb wisdom. And, yes, I'm going to leave you with that. So thank you for being here. Please take a look in the show notes. Please support the show if you have the abilities. That would be really great because this does take time and money. And I want to keep doing this and I will keep reaching out to all sorts of women. I will start this year reaching out to people who are from different fields also, men, men are welcome to come on the show. I think they're a bit shy or they just haven't had the interest yet. So, okay, I'm going to leave it at that. And next time I'll talk about menopause. I'm not there yet and I don't intend to be there for quite a while because I'm quite enjoying myself at this, this transitional phase now. Now I've gotten used to perimenopause. Oh, yes, that's another thing. Um, so there's one uh herb it's a mix of herbs actually called emea it's made in the netherlands but i'm sure you can order it online and that has really helped me to regulate my period cycles um throughout this last few years and it it made it more regular than what it was before so i always had my periods every 23 days my whole life um after my first abortion, so that was when I was 19. So for a long time, 
I've had them very, very often, like very quickly. And then using this EMEA, which is a mix of minerals, vitamins, and so they use green tea in one. In another one, it's um, cayenne pepper. And that has also helped me. Cayenne peppers help me to lose the weight and um, to get more energy and also have more sexual or libido, sexual interest. Um, and what else? There was one more thing in there. Mm, I can't remember the name but I will write it in the show notes again. So please look at the show notes. You can see my brain is not as clear today. So I am in my period, so that's why. So, yes, the energy is moving down. But this EMEA was really incredible because it helped my periods move from that 23 cycle, which then in perimenopause became every two-week cycle, to a 25, 26-day cycle, which gave me a few more days to be in a rhythm. So that's also nice. But like, like anything, there is no one size fits all. So if your periods are every 20 days or every 35 days, that's normal, okay? The 28-day or 29-day cycle is would be ideal because then we're all cycling with the moon. But that's not how life is and that's not how we work. Okay, and that's the wonderful thing about nature and humanity is we are not predictable. We will never be predictable. Once we are predictable, we will die. So I am totally against this AI crap. I really don't want people to get enthused by this. I think it's special that there are things that are still surprises and unpredictable. And we should celebrate it and, and honour it and welcome it and look at all the beauty that it's brought. Imagine if all your children were born exactly the same and we chose their genes and we could order how they came out. What would be the fun in life after that? So life is fun because of this chaotic, like you hear the wind outside, chaotic, unpredictable movement. That is life. So... Namaste to you all. Much love. Thank you for listening to me rambling <laughs> about the wonderfulness of our bleeds and our changes. Namaste. So thank you everyone for staying to the end of the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. I really love doing these talks with these amazing people. And if you want to know more, just take a look in the show notes. There's plenty of links and ways to connect with either the guest or myself. If you want to work with us or find out more about us, just check out the information in the show notes. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend or week and You'll be hearing from me next week. Bye.